Good morning, Discovery. And uh, Nancy, we're pretty sure that you recognize that uh, from the second grade class at Ferguson Elementary where your daughter Stephanie is in South Shore Harbor. Good morning, Mark, and uh, good morning to the kids in uh, Ferguson Elementary. They did a wonderful job with that, and it's, uh, it's a great way to wake up on orbit listening to a beautiful song like that from a bunch of beautiful kids. We agree. Discovery Houston, that's a good-looking crew. Are you ready for the event? Discovery's ready. KSE PAO, this is Houston. Please call Discovery for a voice check. Discovery, this is KSC PAO. How do you hear me? Discovery, read your loud and clear. Does the flight crew have an opening statement they'd like to make? We'd like to welcome you aboard Discovery. It's been a spectacular mission for us so far. Launching within 60 seconds of a scheduled time after a short delay was a spectacular beginning of the mission. Our first day was the smoothest day I've seen in uh, any mission. The deployment went off without a hitch. Our primary mission is complete with the Tedris on its uh, proper orbit now. We're working this week on the secondary experiments. We'll be glad to talk to those uh, during the conference, and we're looking uh, with uh, optimistic pleasure to uh, joining everyone back on the ground this coming Friday. And we're just now approaching the coast of Baja, 160 miles uh, above the ocean. And you can go ahead with your questions. Marcia Dunn of the Associated Press for Don Thomas. I'm wondering if you feel like you're on a talk show circuit up there considering some of the questions you've been asked. And does it matter what kind of questions people ask as long as they're interested in why is this important to NASA? question uh, that the press or public might have up here. We've, we're having a great time and we're up here to share this with the rest of the country and the rest of the world, this spectacular experience of flying in space. This is Irene Brown with UPI. Your colleagues on STS-71 and MIR-18 had some insightful and poignant remarks on uh, long duration, low Earth orbit space flight. I'm wondering how you would feel about a three or four month space station research assignment and if any of you have your names in the hopper for the shuttle MIR mission. This is Mary Ellen Weber, and I would certainly like to go for three or four months uh, aboard the Mirror before uh, the International Space Station that we're going to be building. Um, it's, uh, there's some challenges to doing that, but I think the excitement and the benefit to all of, to all of the world would be well worth it. This is Seth Borenstein at the Orlando Sentinel. And the Orlando Sentinel Online asked uh, our users to send in a question for you. And George Below, Satellite Beach, Florida, asked, uh, how do you feel about completing the mission Space Shuttle, Ch Space Shuttle Challenger started over nine years ago? Well, it's indeed uh, an honor and a privilege to be assigned to any Space Shuttle mission. This one had particular meaning for all of us because it was a replacement satellite for the Tedris that was lost on Challenger. And I think it just speaks very highly of the way that the agency has recovered from that. Uh, all you have to do is look at our first day, just an absolutely uh, flawless countdown, no problem at all, right on time. Everything the first day worked as well as I've ever seen anything on any mission work. And we've just been uh, very, very pleased thus far with how the mission has gone. This is Jim Banky of Florida today. I guess I'll ask this one of uh, Tom. Uh, Norm, uh, coming back from here, talked about psychological aspects, cultural isol isolation and that kind of stuff. Uh, could you just talk generically when you're on a shuttle mission, how you guys on the orbiter stay in touch with what's going on 
non-space related world down here on the ground and how you stay in touch with your families and could you give a specific example of how you exchanged uh, greetings perhaps with your families? Uh, we have a computer program that allows us to transmit messages between the uh, orbiter and Houston and our family escorts that are helping the families on the ground will collect and distribute those messages so once a day we transmit uh, personal messages from the orbiter to our families. And when those messages are uplinked to us, they also include updates on uh, major news events, sporting events, and anything else that may be of interest to the crew. We also have what we call uh, private uh, family conferences, uh, which give us an opportunity once during the mission to talk uh, directly to our immediate family members uh, through mission control. And we also have SARX on board this flight, and that also gives us one opportunity during the mission to make a personal phone call to a family member. Peter Galtieri with the West Kentucky News. Uh, for Mary Ellen, uh, being a rookie on board, uh, when you're here on Earth, you don't have to worry about things float around in front of you. Do you have to take any special precautions uh, while you're breathing, make sure you don't suck in an M&M strolling around up there, or maybe a fly, maybe? Well, sometimes I try to suck in any M&Ms that are floating around, but uh, in general, the uh, air is pretty clean up here, and you just uh, live and do, go about your business normally. Uh, there's always a little bit more of a risk of getting something in your eye or getting something up your nose, but uh, we, we can take care of that. Uh, this is Dave Lohr with the Columbus Dispatch in Columbus, Ohio, uh, for Commander Hendricks. Uh, today is the uh, anniversary of the launch of Apollo 11, and uh, I'd like your views and anybody else who wants to comment on uh, whether you would put a priority on returning to the moon and why. Well, I think NASA has had that as a goal for at least a decade now, is to return to the moon with the uh, fiscal reality of the... Uh, present economy, we aren't going to be able to do that in the near future, and that's why we're concentrating on endeavors like the International Space Station and cooperating with the Russians to make that an affordable project. But long range, definitely, we will be going back to the moon and beyond. Richard Dunn at the AP again for um, Colonel Henricks. I'm wondering if you're starting to feel more like a space salesman than an astronaut uh, because of all the budget cuts to the program. And uh, when, do, when does talking about all this sort of stuff to people like us start to be intrusive to your job in orbit? Well, the budget cuts aren't affecting this mission. Uh, we're completing the uh, TDRS system, and we were scheduled uh, years before the um, cuts began to materialize. As far as this becoming uh, a generic or everyday, activity, I think that's still years away, but the research that we're conducting now does have immediate benefit to researchers on the ground. And the experiments that are relating directly now include the bioreactor experiment, the protein crystal growth experiment, and Hercules, which is a device that can geolocate images uh, while we're orbiting the Earth. So I think there is return that's being generated now, but the majority of the return is yet to be seen. This is Irene Brown with UPI. Um, I'd just be interested in Nancy's response to my earlier question about long duration, low Earth orbit um, missions and how you'd feel if you would take such a thing. Would that be too much of a hardship, the separation from your daughter and, and your family? No, I'd take an assignment like that in a heartbeat. I think any of us would that we're in the program and we're all looking forward to the years that we're going to be assembling and then later on flying on the space station particularly because it's now such an international effort. And as far as uh, any of our families, I, I think I speak for almost everybody on the crew that all our families are very supportive of what we do, understand that we're here to do the job that we do, and accept the separation as a part of that. This is Seth Bornstein from the Orlando Sentinel. For uh, Colonel Hendricks, I believe you're doing these vision tests on people who are in their early 40s, and I guess you qualify as the oldest crew member. Have you noticed any uh, vision deterioration, and are those vision tests pretty easy, or are they uh, d uncomfortable? 
Well, the vision function test is a follow-on. This is actually number four in a series, and I had the uh, pleasure of flying it on one of my previous flights in a different version. And yes, I have noticed some change in my vision uh, on orbit. Uh, one of the tests that uh, uh, forces us to react quickly from a far target to a near target is changing. My response time has changed, and I think that's due to the uh, fluid shifting and changing the shape in the eyeball a little bit. Of course, we are doing some sleep shifting, so we're not completely arrested at the moment. So we're not sure exactly which factors will affect the vision, and this test will help determine that. This is Jim Banke of Florida Today. Again, uh, a question uh, maybe for uh, Kevin Kriegel since we haven't heard him yet. Um, I think there's still a feeling here among the general public that once you guys deployed TDRIS, uh, the mission was essentially over. Of course, you're up there another week. Why are you still in space, and uh, which one of those secondaries that you're doing do you think offers the most uh, practical and immediate benefit for the average guy on the street? Well, the reason that we're still up here in space is the initial cost, the big upfront cost, is the launch. And once you get that out of the way, you might as well stay up uh, for a while and use the space and the weight that we have to do some of these experiments especially some of the experiments that couldn't justify the cost of a, a shuttle mission. As Tom said, we've got the crystal growth experiment, which, which we've flown several times, and, and we are seeing some benefits with any inferior-type drugs, which is going to help the, uh, the common person on the streets. This uh, bioreactor is, has great potential for growing different tissues and maybe organs in the future. Uh, they're doing the NIH experiment to look at several different things on the exoskeletal system, and the nervous system. So we're doing a lot out here, and I think it's well worth uh, the time spent up. Pete Galtieri with the West Kentucky News. Uh, this is for anyone who had a good uh, window seat. During the uh, ascent, uh, there was quite a spectacular uh, show during the uh, Max Q when there was a lot of condensation coming off the, uh, the shuttle. It looked real spectacular from here. How did it look from inside? out of the front window, but uh, during ascent I had my little hand mirror out and I was able to look out of the overhead windows and I could see some of the uh, plumes coming off there, condensation plumes, and it was pretty spectacular from the inside. Uh, this is Dave Lohr from Columbus Dispatch. For Dr. Weber, um, as a uh, skydiver, are you looking uh, uh, for any chance uh, to put on the suit and get outside? Uh, and is that uh, possible uh, if the mission remains trouble-free? Do you have any influence on uh, uh, doing that kind of activity? Uh, of course, Don Thomas and myself would love to get outside and see what it's like out there. But we'll only do that in the, in the case of an equipment malfunction, and none of us on board are hoping uh, that that happens. So uh, maybe the next flight. Discovery, stand by now for Lewis PAO. Good morning, Discovery. This is Lewis PAO. How do you hear me? Good morning, Cleveland. Loud and clear. Good morning. This is Harry Boomer from Cleveland Television News, channels 19 and 43. How are you this morning? Oh, we're having a great day here in orbit. How are things in Cleveland? A little hot, but it's kind of nice. How do you guys uh, pull off getting an all-Ohio crew up there? Well, it's not entirely an all-Ohio crew. The uh, governor helped make it an all-Ohio crew by christening uh, Kevin Kriegel as an honorary Buckeye. Uh, it's quite by uh, coincidence. Uh, the one thing that does influence it is the fact that Ohio has produced more astronauts than any other state, and it was just by coincidence that four out of five of us uh, claim Ohio as our home. Joe Froelich from the Cleveland Plain Dealer for Mary Ellen Weber and Kevin Kriegel. But before you fly, you hear a lot... Before you fly, you hear a lot from other astronauts about the experience of launch and of being in space. Uh, what are your sort of initial impressions on that, and what are you going to be telling uh, other astronauts, other future astronauts, when you get back? Well, now, after going, having gone through it, I understand why everybody has said that it's just spectacular and indescribable, and it really is. It's, it's just an incredible 
feeling being on top of this rocket and feeling feeling the sheer power and force of it. Um, as far as the weightlessness, it's uh, again until you actually experience it, words can't quite describe it. So I have a few more days to work on how I'll explain that down to the folks to the ground. This is Carol Wilkinson with WJW TV8 here in Cleveland. I have a question for you. I can remember back when man was trying to get to the moon, when astronauts were trying to reach out and, and just take the universe and bring it closer to Earth. Are you sensing that same sort of excitement, or has the excitement about uh, space shuttles and missions to other planets died down a bit? Well, I think I can speak for everyone. Uh, we wouldn't be in this job if the excitement had died down. We still think that we're on the frontier and, and part of building the, the future for us and going out to space with the space station, back to the moon, back to Mars. It's just a long haul, and uh, we're still real excited about being part of that. This is Steve Green from 3WE Radio in Cleveland. I got a question about music. Uh, every morning... Uh, that there's a mission with the space, any of the space shuttles. Uh, you guys wake up to music in the morning, and being that you guys have uh, a mostly Ohio crew, you've got uh, your New York crew member as well. Uh, how you know? It seems like you've got the perfect promotional team for uh, the Rock and Roll Hall hovering over us. What have you, what have you got to say about the uh, Rock Hall in Cleveland? Well, as a matter of fact, we are flying an item in our special flight data file for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and uh, after the flight, we plan on visiting Cleveland to uh, help uh, commemorate the grand opening and uh, return that item. Um, hi, this is Jacqueline McLean from Channel 5. My question is really basic. What's it like to be up in space? Oh, it's a very pleasant experience to be here in microgravity. It's uh, physically effortless. As you can see, we're floating free here. The only thing we're doing to maintain our position is sliding our feet under something. The experience of looking out the window is absolutely spectacular. You cannot get enough of it. Even on a dark pass with the moonlit night to, that we are experiencing now, we can see cloud tops. Uh, you look down and you see how fragile our atmosphere is, you realize that uh, even you there at the Lewis Research Center are traveling on a spaceship, and it's the one we all share called the planet Earth. Harry Boomer from Channels 19 and 43 again. I see you guys are having to try and steady yourselves there. How difficult is it for you to maintain the posture you have right now instead of floating around the cabin there? It's pretty difficult. We learned that yesterday during one of our events, and that's why the three of us in the back are uh, flat against the wall, secured by the sleeping bags that we use, and uh, Tom and Mary Ellen are in foot restraints. So for the first couple of days, until you get your rates down, uh, it's very easy to uh, somewhat get out of control, uh, particularly in the mid-deck of the wide-open area. Carol Wilkinson with WJW-TV8 again. Uh, a question for the ladies on board. Do you think uh, missions like this are the pathway to us seeing more women in space, more women as part of the space program, and more women uh, traveling in space in the future? Yes, I think more and more women uh, will be traveling in space. Um, yeah, to have careers in the background... And as more and more women go into those kinds of fields and get the necessary education, uh, they will more and more will be selected as astronauts. So I think uh, the future is very bright for the women of our country. This is uh, Jacqueline McLean again from Channel 5. Uh, you guys are in your fourth day right now. Uh, how would you rate it so far? Is eight days too long to be up there, or do you think missions could even go longer? I was on a 15-day flight a year ago up in orbit on STS-65, and uh, they keep us so busy 
uh, on these missions that 15 days was a pretty good workout. We were all exhausted when we landed on that one. And talking to other crew members, and I've talked with some Russians, and everybody seems to agree about a seven or eight day mission such as we have here is just about perfect. Steve Green from 3WE again. Uh, you guys had some troubles with woodpeckers on your way up. Are you looking forward to them when you get back, and maybe will you bring a woodpecker with you in the future? Well, as a matter of fact, we do have a mascot on board, and there's also one in Mission Control. We uh, realize that uh, the Kennedy Space Center shares that territory with a bird sanctuary, and uh, the birds took their uh, toll on this flight, but again, the uh, troops there at the Kennedy Space Center did the correct thing and patched those up and got us off safely. As far as uh, looking forward to our return to Earth, we're looking forward to going back to the Kennedy Space Center and thanking those thousands of people that have made this vehicle flawless. We have not had one anomaly on this flight. It's operating perfectly. And uh, whether they're uh, having fun with the birds or not, they're doing a great job at the Kennedy Space Center. Discovery, we're with you on the mid-deck. You can see uh, Don has his hairball deterrent on. I understand. This is Mission Control Houston. This Discovery, go ahead, Don. Hey, Tom, I'm at uh, step five on page one dash seven. I just put uh, the G3 plus cartridge into the uh, PCBA, and I got a message that says to uh, replace with another cartridge. Says analyzer interrupted. Use another cartridge. Code number eight. We copy. Let us check. This is Mission Control Houston. This television shows the bioreactor development system of which uh, Don Thomas on board Discovery was just talking uh, with Mission Control about. Uh, that's one of the secondary experiments uh, currently on the lower deck of the spacecraft. It uh, studies the growth of cell cultures in weightlessness uh, using a cylindrical vessel uh, for their growth. Uh, cell cultures are believed to be able to be grown uh, in a much more precise and identical fashion in weightlessness uh, than can be performed in Earth's gravity uh, due to the fact that uh, in weightlessness they can be flown again in this grown in this cylindrical vessel with no pressure points uh, since they're floating in the middle and the rotating cylinder serves to provide nutrients uh, constantly surrounding those samples. Currently, uh, Thomas is working to take a uh, standard daily sample of the medium in the bioreactor development system uh, that's done each day as part of the experiment.
This is Mission Control Houston. This television view from Discovery shows uh, mission specialist Nancy Curry uh, taking a microbial sample of uh, water supply on board the spacecraft. This experiment uh, is being done as a method of evaluating. Uh, Discovery Houston uh, surgeons really interested in this video and appreciates the time uh, spent getting it. That's our job. Uh, Houston Discovery, now you should be seeing a live downlink of BDS. And we have that Discovery. Looks fine. This view shows the medium in the uh, bioreactor development system, uh, the rotating cylinder that's uh, being studied as a cell culture growth uh, device on board the shuttle. Again, this device allows uh, cell cultures to grow with no pressure points uh, in the weightlessness of orbit, um, which cannot be achieved in laboratories on Earth. Discovery Houston, Tedris East now. Uncle. Discovery Houston, nice view of Chantel.